The Attack on Titan basement reveal is finally here. How will fans react? So what's up guys, Foxman here. And yes, finally it's time. About six years later, finally this is getting revealed for the anime. Last time you had your final goodbye to Commander Irwin after that heart-wrenching moment. Now, there's a whole new world from here on. So, be sure to give a colossal thumbs up and subscribe. Set a bell notification so YouTube actually works and send you my videos. Anyway, let's get started. At the start of this, you have best girl Armin awakening from this mental or dream state. So note that the scene right here was a colossal titan face. This scene in the manga has always been a question, even to this day, to Attack on Titan readers. Now for the anime, you actually have audio here. It definitely sounds like the previous colossal titan holder crying, also known as the warrior Bert. It's looking like death is literally looking straight at you. Previously, there was a question and mystery about whether this could potentially be a conscious Colossal Titan being depressed just over has been used over the centuries, which honestly still very much may be on the table. For Armin, that's now his Colossal Cross to bear. After Armin wakes up, you got him asking whether that was Bert. Although to the side, you have Potato Girl Sasha next to him crying, just sleep talking about how it hurts. So really another curveball thrown into this confusing mix. What do you think that Colossal Titan face was? Was it Bert? Was it Armin? Was there a previous Colossal Titan? Or was it just Armin overhearing Sasha? Also, I just love joking about best girl Armin, but take a look at those sexy abs, which did in fact appear with the steamy Armin last episode. It is funny because I constantly see to this day people asking whether Armin is actually a guy or a girl. Hopefully this helps you. Otherwise, I don't think anyone can. Next up, that assault from Eren. Aw, the best anime couple right here. I totally ship it. Somewhere off in the distance, you have Mikasa in depressed mode. Cry time, why hasn't Eren ever hugged me like that? By the way, did anyone notice the thick animation lines for a split second here? A couple of times. Oh my god, you're back into season 1 territory for a quick moment. Then for Levi coming in, Levi must have been like, oh, am I interrupting something? I could have sworn it was a girl that had the thing for the guy. If you guys want, I could come back so you guys could have your quickie. So getting into this episode, it's more like this recovery episode after the whole Titan War. Ultimately, you have the harsh reality setting in. Besides the Great Leader expiring, over 90% of the Serbi Corps is gone. What, maybe 95%? You got 9 people left. 9 very special Titan survivors. Two of them actually being Titans. Unfortunately, you guys let a couple of them escape. Oh well, just another day for the Serbi Corps. As for Mr. Horse here, he mentioned how they were looking for any survivors. Could you freaking imagine having to be on duty for that? You'd have to go into that blood-soaked area leading up to the Beast Titans area. Along the way, you would keep on finding a ton of human chunk remains. Maybe even half of Marlo's coconut. Then poor Armin just soaking all of this in. I do have to point out with Armin surviving this death situation, you ultimately do have a familiar shonen cliche for Attack on Titan, with the original trio surviving. But looks like Attack on Titan can't avoid all tropes. I mean, everyone was like, what the hell guys? Obviously it should have been Erwin. That would have objectively been the better option. So right now I am debating about doing an in-depth video on who was the right choice, Erwin or Blonde Boy Armin. Post down below if you want to see that. As for Hanji here, I do like her doubling down on Mikasa and Eren really going beyond a normal military violation. You guys got to get punished. Levi, take out the whip. You're gonna get a week of 50 shades of Hanji, this time uncensored. And really, the most important key here comes from Mr. Ackerman. You got Levi doubling down on this being his choice. Levi was the one that decided the time and place for Erwin's death. Again, not Armin. Armin was basically dead at that point. And I get it, if you don't like Armin, totally fine. Just don't wrongly blame him for Erwin and Bert's death. I mean, even Hanji was like, it should have been the commander. But even so, Hanji doubles down on Levi being the one who the commander entrusted the titan steroid shot to. So Armin, time to be the substitute for the commander, at least to some extent. Better get those eyebrows growing, nice and plump. Then for Armin, throughout this whole scene, it really looked like the poor guy was about to piss himself over realizing this. That he really now had to be the commander's replacement. Thanks, Mikasa and Eren. The little guy looked totally sick. Almost about to throw up again. You do have to love Levi coming in. Oh, don't worry, Armin. There is no way you could be a substitute for the great commander. Just gotta knock Armin down a few levels. But at the same time, easing some of the pressure in Levi's own way. Better for Armin to have no regrets using the Colossus Titan power. So putting Potato Girl Sasha's interruption aside, at least Armin isn't alone on this. Part of Commander Erwin's legacy will have to live on via Hanji as a new commander. You already got a taste of this in Attack on Titan Season 3's Uprising arc. But, can Hanji actually be a leader figure for the Survey Corps? 
By the way, a bit of a side note, it looks like these guys had a surprisingly good amount of Thunder Spears left. Most of these should have been the ones that Levi didn't get a chance to use. Next up, a flashback with young Carlo. Looks like Mama Jaeger had a short haircut. If you notice, this flashback also started at 8 minutes 45 seconds. Coincidence? The key being 8.45. But really, how long ago was this? I am glad to see Sayama added this regarding why the family avoided the basement. At the same time, I wonder if Carla ever suspected anything. So getting into Eren, Hanji, Mikasa, and Hanji going to their home. I really did notice the anime adding a lot more connected tissue compared to what the manga originally had. I mean, I do have a feeling there's going to be complaints about this. A very nice touch was just Mikasa and Eren with their younger selves running ahead of them. This place, their hometown, actually used to have life once upon a time. And my god, they even added a Hannes callback here. Definitely had to show Uncle Hannes drinking. I do have to mention that the animation in this episode looked rough in a lot of spots, including this. I almost didn't recognize him. This episode definitely had a good amount of flashback and anime original stuff. Although I feel like it was a better touch, especially after the recent Titan Battle events. The Season 1 music in the background was very well placed. They also kept on splicing Attack on Titan Season 1 clips. This just made them even more apparent how the anime changed styles over the years. As for the quick Grisha flashback, this really gave you a reminder how young Eren was curious about the freaking basement. If you think back to episode 1, Papa Grisha was actually going to show him that in the first episode, at least when he got back. But you know what happened, Papa Grisha went to the liquor store and never came back. Poor Eren and his daddy issues. Anyway, finally getting to the basement, but not before another giant rock keeping the doorway blocked. Then the actual infamous keyhole. Oh my god, Eren can't get his precious thing into the hole. Levi, help, it doesn't fit. Oh well guys, let's just go back home. That might have been what happened with the warriors. But really, I like how Levi didn't have patience for this crap. He went full Ackerman to smash that bitch over here. Winner, Levi. And then Eren off to the side was like, I know how that poor door feels. So before moving into the juicy stuff, something to notice here is how Mikasa addressed Grisha. She said Grisha Sensei or Dr. Grisha. This really just being a reminder how Mikasa was never fully adopted into the Jaeger family. I constantly see people making this mistake. Mikasa at most lived with them for maybe a year. Even in the novel, you have Mikasa referring to Grisha and Carla as uncle and aunt. Anyway, finally into the basement. Oh, what's this? You got some weird circles drawn on the ground? It looks like someone may have lost a leg doing something weird here. But really, nothing out of the ordinary down here. Just a bunch of medicine. Should have really investigated what else the doctor was cooking. Anything blue. Or maybe growing some of that good Titan stuff. I mean, where are all the Titan injections? Next up, you actually have a new scene with young Mikasa and Papa Grisha added. This is anime original, and it is nice to see past moments like this since Isayama didn't have time to include them in the manga. But anyway, unlike Eren, Mikasa was able to find the hole. Someone get this Ackerman a prize. So it looks like Levi was able to find the actual stash. Oh my god, Papa Grisha was hiding a death note all this time. Seriously, Grisha definitely took a page out of Light's book with this hiding technique. And actually, if you think about it, if the interior military police did come to search Grisha's home, this spot might have been too obvious, especially having a drawer locked away with nothing in it. Anyway, time for some family reading time. A nice Eren Mikasa moment with their hands placed on the Titan Bible. Better hope no kinky Titan stuff randomly comes up. Next up, briefly cutting over to the government guys. The important people here being Zachary, Pixies, and Niall. From Niall, now you're actually getting the rest of Erwin's flashback question. You saw most of this in the Attack on Titan Season 3 Uprising arc. However, back then it cut before actually revealing what Erwin asked to his daddy. Ultimately, young Erwin's question snowballed into the events leading into his father's death. Quite the simple question too, has anyone actually been able to verify no humans are alive outside the colossal titan walls? For the Irwin flashback, you got a young eyebrows in the making. Irwin's point here was regarding the history books clearly not being objective. This makes you wonder who else has questioned this stuff throughout the years. Irwin definitely couldn't have been the first one. Perhaps the other people just got taken out by the Kenny squad. On the other hand, Irwin may have survived since he eventually got into this high-ranking enough government position. Oh, Irwin is snooping around and knows the truth, potentially? Don't worry, that guy's a Surrey Corps commander. Just save Kenny the trouble and eventually the Titans will get him. And regarding all the stuff outside the wall, at this point, you know the warriors came from outside Wall Maria. The anime also heavily hinted, or really just made the stuff pretty obvious with the whole Ymir situation in Attack on Titan Season 2. Perhaps you've forgotten at this point. But recall that Ymir's mid info card in one of the episodes pretty much revealed a good chunk of the mystery. As for Zachary here, oh, don't worry now. You could talk it over with Erwin over a beer when he's back. Really, just typically say, am I sharpening that dagger for usage later? 
Anyway, back to the basement reviews. The very first thing being the picture on top. You even have Grisha's writing here clarifying this actually being a photograph. One of those things you see on Titan Twitter. The second key reveal, which is more like a confirmation. Not only Grisha coming from the outside, but humanity living peacefully outside. Then the third reveal, which is the people in this picture. I think you'll find out the whole story soon enough. I don't know if I should get into spoilers here, so let me ask you. Who do you think these people are in this picture? If you do want to know the juicy spoilers, post down below. You could also check out my video going in depth on Grisha's past. Overall for the basement reviews, so far 3 books they found. The anime has really only scratched the surface. But let me ask you, how do you feel about the key stuff revealed this episode? What were you expecting to be down here? This includes anime only people and also manga readers. For manga readers, what were you expecting back then before knowing the truth about the Attack on Titan world? I do have my own thoughts about the actual reveals coming up. For that, I'll save that for next episode, where I'll be able to actually really get into this. Next up, did you stay for the after credit stuff? There is an actual scene after the credits. Is this the first time they've done something like this for Attack on Titan? And no, I'm not talking about the season 2 or season 3 cliffhanger tease. Anyway, I was hoping they would save this for the next episode, but now you got it. I got a feeling they're gonna repeat it. You got Grisha's flashback starting up. You can see a young Grisha and young sister putting on some special identification armband. Don't forget about the blimp in the sky. So, oh my god, what's going on here? When did they go all full metal alchemist like? One of the key things mentioned in this flashback is that wall, which really serves as another parallel to the current story. Unfortunately, Grisha did not listen, which really kickstarted the events leading up to the current Attack on Titan story. The full truth will get continued to be revealed next episode. As for my thoughts on this episode, clearly there's a good chunk of padding, or filler like some of you like to call it. I actually don't mind the addition of this, especially knowing what's coming up. In fact, I would welcome more of this stuff for Grisha's flashback stuff. Hopefully you've enjoyed the Attack on Titan action so far. Also, hopefully you're not only watching Attack on Titan for the action stuff. The next few episodes will be mostly flashback stuff, and a lot of fun discussions from the Attack on Titan cast. I have been tweeting about this the past few weeks, but let me mention it here. The basement reveal will really determine who are the true Attack on Titan fans that stick around. I'm predicting you guys will be mixed on this. I'm just wondering whether it's going to be 50-50 or more like 30-70, although I'm not sure in which direction. What do you think will happen? Do you think anime only people will love the basement reveals coming up? Unfortunately, I'm also predicting and expecting some people will try to make a controversy from this basement stuff. A hint to that being that armband stuff. If that does happen, it may blow up even bigger than the recent Goblin Slayer and Shield Hero controversy stuff, just due to how colossal Attack on Titan has gotten. Again, I really hope I'm wrong on the whole controversy stuff, but I would be really surprised if someone doesn't at least try, especially for the clicks and money potential there. Anyone else think there's a good chance for an Attack on Titan controversy coming? Next up, let's get into some Attack on Titan manga to anime changes, some highlights. And really, I might have to carve out time this week to just make a full video on it. At the start of this, the anime added a couple of new scenes just showing what these guys were on the ground level. This included Mikasa, Flock, and Hanji. These character stills were not in the manga. Next up, the whole Eren Mikasa group heading towards the actual basement. For this, there was actually a lot of anime original stuff. The anime actually took its time showing you the characters getting to that location, Eren's home. They also included some still images showing what Armin and the other guys were doing while Eren was busy, which was really just waiting around. Next up, a new anime original shot. Just a random scene of Eren and Mikasa being scavengers with those planes. I guess the survey court doesn't pay a lot. Inside the actual basement, I already did touch on the actual Mikasa Grisha flashback. I really do have to do a whole video on this episode. For total chapters covered this episode, really only about one. It covered chapter 85. Plus, it did cover six pages from the next chapter. That was in the post credit scene. So, about five chapters left for three episodes. Really quickly, I should remind you guys I do have a Patreon. Keep in mind the lower tier does include monthly streams with me, including an Attack on Titan only stream. So go ahead and check the link down below to join the fun, or if you just want to support the channel. Anyway, for the episode, how much did you like or dislike this episode? Was there too much padding, or was it a welcome addition to the manga? Definitely go ahead and chime in down below. Check out my in-depth Promare anime review, and also my in-depth look at the new Colossal Titan. Unfortunately, the video kept on getting delayed, but it's finally out. Don't miss it, and I'll see you guys later.